Thank you. Thank you both for being here. Uh, Ms. Felton, I very much appreciate the focus in your original testimony on small businesses and the importance of the XM Bank and how it is that it can support small businesses and give them access to markets they might not otherwise have. And I, like the ranking member, am very pleased to see some of the good news that you're able to bring us that the number of dollars that's gone into small business lending has increased uh, from 2008 to 2012. But the bad news seems to show that over the last five years, that the bank has dedicated a smaller proportion of its lending to small businesses. And so while small business lending made up 22% of XM Bank's lending back in 2008, by 2012, according to your published reports, it's down to 17%. So I'm a little concerned here about the trend. Can you give us some explanation about what's going on? Yes, Senator, and thank you for the question. Uh, it's a very good one. Uh, we are mindful that we have a congressional mandate to finance or allocate 20% uh, of our financing to small businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, what, we've, uh, what I should have noted uh, is that although, um, as you correctly pointed out, the dollar amount that has gone to small business relative to our total outstanding uh, financing has declined. Um, the number of transactions that are represented in our activity is very, very significant. We, 88% uh, of our transaction volume in 2012 represented small businesses. And um, that's kind of the classic 80-20 rule that um, uh, it's labor intensive. It, it takes a lot to reach small businesses and that's part of why we are uh, conducting so many global access forums around the country in order to get the to reach out and, and find them and make sure that they know about the opportunity to work with Exxon Bank in order to uh, finance their exports. But beyond um, the outreach and the promotion, we have created, um, I think, a number of, of strategies and adopted some innovations in order to leverage our resources better so that we can get more done. Um, and, and I think taking some other very important initiatives. So when you look at the uh, relative decline as a percentage of our financing uh, of the dollars that have gone to support small business, um, it's really a function of the denominator. What we're finding is that uh, you know, there are a, large, a number of very large transactions that are coming to the bank, some of them having to do with large infrastructure projects. I'll give you an example. We, we uh, financed a large petrochemical um, facility in Saudi Arabia. It was $5 billion of financing, and it, um, I think, created something like 11,000 jobs or supported 11,000 jobs in the United States. That's very powerful. But in order to get the opportunity to um, support so many jobs with one transaction that's $5 billion, we'd have to go out and find a billion dollars of small business opportunities to support. And, um, and that that can be difficult. So that's one of the things that you're seeing when you see the um, relative decline in terms of uh, small business support compared to uh, what we've done in, in overall. I would say that, and I'll finish this up, that in addition to um, creating new programs to uh, create more efficiency with respect to how we process small business activity, We've been very successful in negotiating opportunities for U.S. procurement, particularly from small businesses, with respect to uh, some of the large projects that we finance. So, for example, Pemex is, you know, the large, uh, the national oil company for Mexico. We financed them for a long time so that they could purchase from the United States. And a couple of years ago, our project finance team negotiated a set aside for small business of two hundred million dollars asked Pemex to identify 500 small companies that they do business with. We scrubbed that list to make sure that they, in fact, were small businesses, that they existed, and that they complied with the SBA's definition of small business. So we take the, the, we take the, the, the mandate very seriously. We're working closely with the SBA as part of the uh, Commerce Department, SBA collaboration on global business solutions. 
and doing everything we can in order to promote more financing for small businesses. Well, then, then let me just wrap this up by saying I very much appreciate the attention you're giving to this. I very much appreciate the outreach and the multiple ways in which you may assist small businesses, sometimes through large business lending. But I hope that the trend line we're seeing, and that is dropping from just in a very short period of time, 22% of the dollars that go out the door are going to small businesses down to 17% of the dollars going out the door are going to small businesses. I hope that's a trend line we're gonna be able to stop and to reverse uh, that it is still the mandate for for this a, uh, for uh, XM to be able uh, to make sure that we're getting these dollars directly to our small businesses. Yes, Senator, I can assure you that the chairman is very committed Good. to that, and if confirmed, I would be very committed as well. Good. Thank, Thank you very much. I'll hold off on Ms. O'Regan. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, Dr. O'Regan, as you know, the financial crash of 2008 was quick, it's sudden, uh, and it caught our nation unawares and seemed to catch most of our regulators unawares as well. But the crisis was years in the making, and there really were a lot of signposts that we were headed for trouble. Uh, I think specifically about consumer financial products. A generation ago, uh, it was clear you could see the price of a credit card, of a mortgage, checking accounts. Uh, uh, it was uh, both the borrowers and the lenders knew the terms of what they were getting into. By the time of the crash, uh, lenders had moved to a very different business model where they advertised one upfront price, but then back in the fine print, uh, there were lots of charges and changes in the interest rates and so on that ultimately changed how much the consumer was paying and obscured how much the consumer was paying. Buyers were less and less able to make comparisons among products and less and less able to tell what kind of obligation they were taking on. Now, the 2008 crash started one lousy mortgage at a time, and yet our regulators seemed remarkably caught off guard during this. As you know, the Office of Policy Development and Research at HUD is responsible for monitoring the housing market conditions and analyzing and gathering data. So my question is, what do you think needs to change at HUD in the way data are collected and analyzed to make sure we're never caught by surprise again? Senator, thank you for that question. Uh, I I'm gonna build off my earlier response on thinking about that report from the National Academy of Sciences, which is that the internal capacity inside PDNR on the data and analytics had declined dramatically. And one part of that was in the economics and housing market piece. And that has been one of the areas that's been built up most since 2008. And I think that's critical. You need ongoing research and data, and you need the staff capacity to be paying attention and so the, the number of staff that had been lost during that time with this expertise was quite large. A second piece of this, though, I think is you, you know, you're going to be watching the indicators. You have the data, and you've got the right staff for doing it. You need to be forward-looking. And the, the ability of PDNR to be looking forward through demonstrations and research had also been limited. One of the areas in which I know HUD is doing research now has to do on financial literacy and different types of counseling programs to both see which ones work and which ones are more cost-effective. That's something we should know as we're looking to design the solutions to avoiding the next housing crisis. So I think you need capacity both for what's going on in the moment and looking forward. And you feel like you have the commitment that you're gonna be able to have the resources you need to collect the data you need and have the people you need to analyze them. If I am um, confirmed, that's my highest priority and it's why I'm taking this job. Oh, good, I'm delighted to hear it. Now. I have another question for you along a, uh, another part of this line, and that is, as you know, the housing market is not entirely recovered from the 2008 mm -hmm. crisis. Uh, according to a recent study by CoreLogic, one in five uh, families with a mortgage uh, is still below water. So the question I have for you is, what is it uh, that your division can do to help inform HUD and to make certain that HUD is responding to the housing crisis in the fullest and most effective way? 
Uh, thank you, Senator. I think this is on the research side, right? The, um, the, one of the most difficult things is to look out at a complicated problem like what's going on in housing markets and see possible solutions. And the benefit of having ongoing research in, for example, the decisions that households make when they're underwater. There's been a considerable amount of research in, during this crisis that has surprised some analysts on who walks away or who doesn't walk away. And what does it take to be able to, what type of modifications does it take in order to um, have sustainable home ownership? And those insights came from research. And so I think I, 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 this, is, this is the purview of what PDNR should be strong at. And these types of lessons from the last several years should shape the agenda of what research we're doing going forward. So I'm hearing you say in part that what you want to do is you want to expand the reach of the research and take it in some new directions, is that correct? Uh, um, one of the things that PDNR did in the last year um, was expand the way it devised its forward-looking research agenda. One of the criticisms in the National um, Academy of Sciences report was that it was insular, looked inside PDNR um, and HUD for making these decisions. They took that to heart. They opened up the process last year had a hearings, a conferences, and input from others to shape the forward-looking agenda in a way that it should meet the needs of a much broader set of, 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 of people who are looking at housing markets. So I think that process is exactly a, a much better one than was used in the past, and I'd be recommending using something like that going forward for setting the research agenda. Good. Well, I just want to say I'm, I'm very encouraged by the direction that HUD has already started, but uh, by the way you talk about the importance of research and, uh, as you rightly say, uh, ranking member, the importance of doing the research that helps us inform decisions before we make them, uh, that we have a real opportunity here to make better decisions going forward. So thank you very much. Thank you both. Thank you for your willingness to serve. Thank you.